Les Frank injuries. Les Frank injuries is an important topic. If a Les Frank injury is not diagnosed and treated properly, it can lead to an altered gait, midfoot arthritis, and long-term disability. A Les Frank injury indicates disruption between the base of the second metatarsal and the medial cuneiform. Les Frank injuries are a spectrum of injuries of the tarsometatarsal joints. It may be an obvious injury, an apparent sprain, or a severe dislocation. Diagnosing Les Frank injury is important. The diagnosis is missed in about 20 to 30 percent of cases, especially in multiple trauma patients. A high index of suspicion is needed to prevent progression of the foot deformity, chronic pain, and dysfunction. You may need weight-bearing films for diagnosing Les Frank injury. This frank injury may also be associated with compartment syndrome. The injury can be purely ligamentous or can be associated with fractures. The open reduction in internal fixation is better in case of fractures. Arthrodesis is better in case of purely ligamentous injury. In general, ligamentous injury does worse than fractures. Anatomy The Les Frank ligament is a large oblique ligament that extends from the plantar aspect of the medial cuneiform to the base of the second metatarsal. It stabilizes the second metatarsal and maintains the midfoot arch. Osseous stability is provided by the Roman arch of the metatarsals and the recessed keystone of the second metatarsal base. The tarsometatarsal joint complex is divided into three units. The medial is the first tarsometatarsal joint and the mobility is 6 degrees. The middle is the second and the third tarsometatarsal joints and it is rigid. The lateral is the fourth and fifth tarsometatarsal joints and that is mobile. That's why you don't fuse the fourth and the fifth tarsometatarsal joints. Another interesting point is the dorsalis pedis artery and the deep perineal nerve both run between the first and the second metatarsal bases. Mechanism of injury, direct injuries, plantar displacement is more common. And direct injuries are more common than direct injuries. The result from axial loading or twisting on a plantar flexed midfoot. Dorsal displacement of the second metatarsal is more common. Check alignment of the dorsum of the second metatarsal with the middle cuneiform. You can see here dorsal displacement of the second metatarsal bone. Associated fractures. Tarsal fracture, especially the cuboid fracture, and it is called the nut cracker fracture, result from twisting injury causing forcible abduction of the forefoot. You might see fracture of the base of the second metatarsal and a compression fracture of the cuboid. Classification of Liz Frank injuries. Les Frank classifications are not useful in deciding the treatment or the prognosis of that injury. Severe injuries are obvious and easily diagnosed and may develop compartment syndrome of the foot. Injuries with minimal displacement could be missed and they will need surgery regardless of the classification.
Arthritis may develop even with minimal displacement. In general, there are three patterns for this injury. Total incongruity or partial incongruity or divergent. In the total incongruity, all five metatarsal displaced in the same direction. Usually, the lateral direction is more common. Partial incongruity, one or two metatarsal displaced from the others. Or divergent type, where there is lateral displacement of the lesser metatarsals with medial displacement of the first metatarsal. As you can see here, there are different fracture patterns that can occur. The one thing all these injuries have in common is disruption of the tarsometatarsal joint complex. Diagnosis. The patient has severe pain in the midfoot and is unable to bear weight. There may be some swelling in the midfoot dorsally. There might be plantar bruising, especially medially. There will be tenderness over the tarsometatarsal joint. Check the skin condition and rule out compartment syndrome. Check the neurovascular status of the foot. A plantar ecchymosis is a classic clinical sign of potential Lis Frank injury. X-rays. Weight-bearing standing X-rays with comparison views if X-rays are normal and if the physician clinically suspects a Lis Frank injury. Another alternative is to get physician-assisted midfoot stress radiograph. Obtain the three views, the AP, the oblique, and the lateral. The medial border of the second metatarsal should line up with the medial border of the middle cuneiform on both the AP and the oblique view. Check for fractures, especially at the base of the second metatarsal at the navicular or the cuboid. Check for widening between the first and the second ray. More than two millimeter is an indication for surgery. In the lateral view, check for the dorsal displacement or subluxation of a metatarsal. The metatarsal should be at the level of the corresponding cuneiform. Check for a flex sign, a bony fragment, which is a avulsion fragment of the Lisfranc ligament from the base of the second metatarsal. The medial side of the fourth metatarsal should line up with the medial side of the cuboid in an oblique view, 30 degrees. CT scan can be helpful and the MRI can confirm a purely ligamentous injury. Treatment. Cast. If there is a dorsal sprain and no instability, patient can be treated with non-weight-bearing cast for six weeks and they return to activity gradually. Surgery is done for instability. Open reduction, internal fixation, with cortical screws if there is bony fractures. When you do RIF, you need anatomic reduction. Hardware removal between 5 to 6 months. Some surgeons leave the hardware in place indefinitely. Arthrodesis if the injury is purely ligamentous. Healing of the ligaments is less reliable than bony healing. In general, if there is purely ligamentous injury, you will do primary arthrodesis. Arthrodesis is also done in old injuries if there is a delay in the treatment, or if there is a failure of open reduction internal fixation of Les Frank injury. Midfoot arthrodesis is used for chronic Les Frank injury that leads to severe midfoot arthritis with progressive arch collapse and midfoot abduction. 
you will do fusion of the medial and middle column, the first, the second, and the third tarsometatarsal joints. You do not fuse the lateral column, which is mobile. What do you do for the lateral column if it is injured? You do reduction and stabilization with K-wire fixations, not with the screws and not with bony fusions. Complication of Liz Frank injury. Post-traumatic arthritis occurs up to 50% of patients. Patient may have altered gait and long-term disability. Purely ligamentous injury has a worse prognosis than injuries with fractures. Malalignment of the fractures usually lead to arthritis. Thank you very much. I hope I was helpful.